that graph, but I'll try. Um, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you. Can you hear me? Yes. Loud enough? Okay, about what I call genomic region analysis. And this work is motivated by the many GWAS studies, genome-wide association studies, where hundreds of thousands of SNPs are individually evaluated for higher or lower frequencies of alleles in case and control subjects. This often identifies genomic regions of interest, but then fails to elucidate those regions. <coughs> The example I'm going to give has to do with telomere length in relation to region-wide patterns found near Turk, a gene located on chromosome 326. The aim is to identify region-wide patterns, not SNP comparisons, but a definition of the region, several patterns that define the region and genetic variation within the region. And I want to check whether those patterns, these region-wide patterns, strongly predict telomere length. The second aim is simply to reproduce those patterns in two different subject groups. And here we have UK blood donors and UK coronary artery disease patients. The idea is that I want to demonstrate that the data analytic technique used to deconvolute all this genetic variation is itself stable and reliable. And third, I want to see whether those patterns, one or more of them, are more common and predictive of coronary artery disease. And here's the study that sparked my interest. Common variants near chart are associated with mean telling and length. Here are our samples, the blood donors and the heart patients. And each copy of a minor allele at this particular SNP was associated with a small, I would think, 75 base pair reduction in mean telomere length, equivalent to about three years of age-related telomere attrition. This region was the most um, best defined and most interesting region found in this genome-wide study. And it was comforting because we know that TURF provides the RNA template for telomerase. It had a certain biologic plausibility. I should point out one salient feature of these two subject groups. Mean telomere link for the blood donors was about 8,500 base pairs long, and it was 1,600 pairs, base pairs shorter in the heart disease patients. And in fact, the findings were much more uh, complex <coughs> than indicated in the article abstract. Here's the region of association about 200,000 base pairs. Here's the location of TURP indicated by the asterisk. And on the y-axis, we see the log p-value. There was a very wide region of log p-values that were highly significant, including TURP, which I'm going to call marker 22, among these 131 in the region extending at least to marker 79, located in different genes. And clearly, as you might expect, these contiguous loci have very high pairwise correlation, or we call it linkage disequilibrium among geneticists. And to, to me, here's where the interesting information starts. Defining the whole region according to these seven linkage disequilibrium blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Our sentinel SNPs are located here. 
and here, the region of interest. They're in two large LG blocks where there's a very well-defined set of outcomes at these SNPs throughout the region having the probability of about 0.68. And an alternate allele that is utterly and completely different. It bears no resemblance to the major allele. And that's a similar finding in block four. A major haplotype having high frequency and an alternate completely different haplotype. This to me suggests recombination, more than recombination, just total rearrangement of the region. In fact, for LD block one, the common allele, the major allele, is the same as the alternate allele, but just in reverse direction. So the challenge is how to represent all this variation in a limited number of variables having a limited number of outcomes. I ended up with 41 variables that parsed through these LD blocks. And I also looked at telomere length as a, as a category, categorical variable, a percentile set of variables for use in <coughs> statistical models. And I'm not going to tell you the, the name, more than the name of the statistical model. It's called greater membership analysis. It's a form of fuzzy latent classification. I'm looking for typologies. And I want several typologies to define the whole region. Here we have the patterns, these typologies, or pure types, are represented by the genotype probabilities, these genetic variables, the pair of haplotypes or subhaplotypes in this 200,000 base per region. This approach is rather unique in that it's fuzzy. Individuals may exactly match a genetic pattern Otherwise, membership scores range between 0 and 1, depending on the degree of resemblance. And I'm going to use these membership scores to predict telling them. In fact, I made three models. The first one, <coughs> I newly used telomere length to pick up obvious associations with the genetic variables. Any final predictive model would want to include those obvious associations. And then I wanted to make models using all of these 41 genetic variables to identify four patterns that represent the data, all of that variation that you saw on those messy slides. And I want those patterns to be the same in the two subject groups. And third, I want to construct a final model in the combined sample and use the membership scores, the resemblance scores, to predict telomere length for persons who match these patterns. Here are the, the findings for model one. Model one suggested altered expression of two particular genes. The only predictive variable that defined typology 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 with these probabilities of outcomes, the, was, telomere was the only predictive variable that defined these patterns, but there was gene, gene, several genetic trends for D16, 17, and 19 <coughs> are central <coughs> right hand of the region, nowhere near Turk. Every time there was a two allele, there was a shift toward shift, short time years, and wherever there was a three allele, there was a shift toward longer time years. Novel alleles appeared to be beneficial 
that rearranged alleles appear to be detrimental. <laughs> now turning to model two, replication. This represents pattern mode <coughs> for the whole genomic region. Here are gen genotype probabilities according to this color scheme for all 41 of those adjacent genetic variables. The point here being that the pattern looks the same for the heart patients and for the blood donors. Here's a representation of pattern two, which is distinct but the same in the two subject groups. And pattern three, which is also the same in the two subject groups, but again distinct. And pattern four. In short, the method replicates in the two samples. I felt confident that then that I could combine the samples and use them in one model, a sort of level playing field, in order to predict <coughs> more Here's pure type one. Here's our interval of interest. This near Turk. This in the LRR genes, about 100,000 base pairs away. This pattern might be called two copies of rearrangement, viable but having short telomeres, equally common in both patient and blood donor samples, unexpectedly. <coughs> Here's a representation of genetic pattern two. It had longer telomeres, significantly longer telomeres, especially among the blood donors. But there was no difference really in, this, in the distribution of membership in the pattern for the case and control groups. It might be summarized as normal, no rearrangement for D8, this marker near Turk. And novel alleles were found in this region in the LRR genes. Pure type three was simple. It just represented no copies of novel alleles, no copies of rearranged alleles. And it was somewhat intermediate in terms of telomere length, and no preference for case and control subjects. Finally, pure type four, also intermediate, and no selection for case and control subjects. It might be called one copy of the rearranged allele and a specific alteration, two, three, at these sentinel locations. So in, in conclusion, I think I've demonstrated that we can go from many snipwise comparisons to a tool that might define, simply once you get used to it, whole genomic <coughs> regions that is rather highly predictive of some health outcome. Shorter telomere link here was predicted by one or two copies of this alternate, apparently re rearranged allele. And it suggests altered gene expression throughout the region, TERP and the other genes. I had hoped that it would finally localize a region, but it didn't. Longer telomere length was predicted by normal, you might say, or no rearrangement for near turf, plus novel outcomes in this specific area. However, none of this predicted the occurrence of coronary artery disease. These are the conclusions for this particular data set, but I think it's a tool that might be generally useful in finding interesting features of genomic regions that have been localized in 
GWAS studies. And as an added note, here's a recipe for heart attack in genetic terms that was published some years ago using the same data, uh, data analytic technique. It was the minor allele for IL-6, the minor allele for TNF alpha, the minor allele for T into leukin 10 and other locations involved in inflammation that together predicted very high risk for heart attack, agnostic of cholesterol. The general point being that it might be use it is useful in a number of contexts. So thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.